welcome back everyone to the hello world guide this is another episode of the android game development series and in this video we are going to get started with understanding what opengl is and using it to initialize and set up our basic rendering context all right so I, as you can see i've got my android project opened up here and before we get to the actual rendering we're going to wrap this login inside of another header because currently it's not convenient to specify the priority and the tag and everything so we're gonna just go ahead and create a new header file we're gonna just call it login and uh, this is going to basically contain all of our login functionality we're gonna just define a couple of macros include that in the main file and inside of login we're going to include the android slash log dot h header and with that we're gonna just define a couple of macros we'll start with the log i macro it's going to take just variadic arguments so that you know we can give it any arguments we want and then we're gonna just paste this here but uh, uh, the difference is of course we won't specify our own message instead we'll use the variable arguments uh, that we get from you know uh, whoever is calling the macro and uh, that's all right but uh, we are gonna go under mainer cp and we're gonna replace this with log i uh, a small mistake we should probably specify the tag here we're going to use just one tag a uniform tag throughout our application uh, you can you know want you might want to have this multiple tags so that you can specify you know for example rendering messages versus game messages etc but for now we're going to just stick with one tag now in main.cpp we are going to just uh, call log i with this initializing the window message and similarly we can uh, do this for our termination as well and this is much cleaner than the previous way and now we're just gonna go ahead and define some other macros as well for the other kind of messages like debugging information warning and error here with these defined i'm going to just go ahead and go into the go into the main.cpp and now we can get started with our rendering so i'm going to create a new c++ class which we are going to just call renderer and this is the main one which is going to take care of all of our rendering and uh, as you can see it gives a warning saying it's not a part of our project so we're going to open up cmake list and with main.cpp we are going to add render.cpp as well and then you can just hit sync now opengl es is basically an interface for interacting with your gpu that is it allows you to send commands to the gpu to do various things you know draw on the screen and other stuff but uh, whatever the gpu generates as a result to display it onto the screen and to actually connect the graphics card you know the opengl interface with the main application you need some kind of layer in between which is not handled by opengl es itself so for that what we use is that we use the uh, Another library called EGL which we'll use to initialize and set up our display and everything and then we'll uh, draw with the OpenGL ES and then we'll use EGL to actually display it onto our main screen. Alright so to get started we are going to include our gles slash egl.h header and then we are going to declare a variable of type egl display. Now the display basically represents a connection between our android display and opengl es so we are going to create a display variable and then we, inside of our public uh, you know member uh, functions we are going to declare our constructor and the destructor and we are going to define both of those in the cpp files. Alright, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and include the gles slash egl.h header here as well. And then we're going to set our display using a function called egl get display. And for the display ID, we are going to just say egl default display to get the default display. Then I'm going to assert that the display is true to make sure that nothing goes wrong. And then we are going to, uh, this only gets us the connection to actually establish it. We have to use egl initialize. After the display, the next two arguments we're going to just leave at null pointers because we can use these to get the version of egl. We don't really care about that. And there is result of this is just an egl boolean which is an unsigned integer we are going to store that in a result variable and we are going to assert that uh, that is equal to egl true if it's equal to anything else that means it failed and since we have initialized everything to ensure that everything gets cleaned up correctly in the destructor we are going to call egl terminate and pass that our display as well so the next thing we need to do is we need to set up an EGL configuration to create a surface and a context for drawing. We need to get a particular configuration. Now to, we are going to just declare a variable of that type and inside of the constructor we can use a function called EGL choose config to get the particular configuration that we want. We are going to specify our display and the next one is going to be a list of attributes. So this is going to be basically uh, an array of EGL int. We'll understand how this works in a second which we are going to represent all of the requirements basically for our configuration. We are going to pass that array here the next argument is the uh, actual uh, configuration pointer you can get multiple configurations and then choose one that you want but we are going to specify our single configuration so we specify one for the number of configurations and uh, we need to actually create another uh, uh, you know integer for getting the actual number of uh, configurations that this will return because the, it can return zero if it doesn't find any configuration that matches the attributes that we give it so we are going inside of the attributes array this is going to be an array of uh, integers 
features which are going to represent the particular thing and uh, its value, the attribute and its value, and it's going to be terminated by this EGL none. So EGL none is going to be at the end. And for the types, we can say EGL renderable type, and for this value, we can say, for example, that OpenGL ES3 bit, which means we want uh, context with OpenGL ES3. And the next thing we'll do is we'll get our uh, surface type, and for that we can say window because we want to draw to our Android screen. You can draw to other things as well, but for now we are going to just say EGL window. Some other attributes that we'll add here are, for example, the red size. This will represent, you know, uh, our screen, how many bits it will have allocated to each color channel. We are going to specify eight for all of those. And there are many other attributes that we aren't interested in them right now. So we are going to just uh, have all of this. And this will basically choose an appropriate configuration. And uh, we are going to just assert to make sure that the number of configurations we get is one. If it is not one, if it's zero, that means that, uh, you know, it failed to find a configuration that matched these attributes. Alright, so after the config, now we can create a surface. The surface, as the name suggests, represents the actual surface that we'll be drawing on. In our case, it's going to be a window as we specified in our configuration attributes, it's supposed to be a window. So here what we'll do is we'll just uh, use surface is equal to EGL create surface and there are a bunch of these uh, different functions here, but we want the window surface because that's the kind of surface we want. It will take the display as the first parameter and as the second parameter, it will take the actual configuration. And for the third parameter, we are going to have to specify the actual window so for that we are going to have to take the android app uh, structure which is going to contain the pointer to the window so we are going to go here and we are going to specify it in our render as well in the constructor we are going to take that as an argument include it from the appropriate header file and in main.cvp we are going to just create our renderer here uh, inside of our main function and uh, we are going to uh, basically pass it our app pointer and of course don't forget to include the header and now we'll have access to the app uh, android app uh, pointer inside of our renderer constructor so we can use that to create the window surface so for the third argument we're going to just say app uh, window here to get the actual window and pass that here and uh, for the next argument we are going to specify another attribute list this is for the actual window we currently don't really care about this so we're going to just pass null here and with that we'll have our window set up completely and in the end don't forget to destroy it with egl destroy surface and then we're going to just pass it our display and the surface now we are going to use assert to ensure that our surface is not equal to EGL uh, no surface which means it is a valid one so we are going to assert that and after that we can uh, get started with the final thing we need to create which is the EGL context which will allow us to actually you know uh, run OpenGL ES calls so for that we will create the EGL context in our render.h and now we are going to use the EGL create context function to create the context and this is going to take the display as the first argument the next one is going to be our configuration that we created earlier and then for the uh, con there is another context which we can use for sharing a context we don't care about that just pass null pointer here and for the final argument the attribute list we are going to have to create another attribute list for our context so I'm going to go and put the other uh, attribute list in another scope to prevent any naming problems and then we're gonna have another scope here and for the attributes this is going to be basically in the same format as the other one but the attributes of course are gonna be different so the attribute that we want is first of all the EGL uh, context client version which represents the version of OpenGL ES that we want and we're gonna just pass 3 here because we were working with OpenGL 3 and of course this list is going to end with EGL none and that is going to to pretty much create our context and that's all we need to do for uh, the final thing we are going to just assert that our context is not equal to EGL no context it is a valid context and uh, then in the destructor we'll need to actually destroy this context so we'll just call EGL destroy context and pass it our display as well as the context and now if you were to actually run this the window display uh, create to window surface would actually fail and the reason behind that if you were to look at the low cat panel would be that uh, the window would be null so the reason this happens is because we create the render here but the window actually gets set up in the app init window signal so instead of setting the render here we are going to use our app's user data in the init window which is just a void pointer we can put a new render here and uh, in the termination window we are actually going to delete it so first of all i'm going to just put some braces here because we're going to create a variable we'll call it renderer and uh, just cast the user data to a renderer pointer we are going to make sure that uh, well first of all we are going to cast it and then we are going to make sure that it is actually not null before we try to delete it we'll just uh, actually delete our render and uh, this is going to happen in the termination of course and uh, this is going to actually get the renderer initialized at the correct time
Another thing that I'll do is I'll go under render.cvp and we're going to include logging.h here and after our constructor is done doing everything we'll just print out an informational message saying, saying that the initialization is complete. Now before we begin using the OpenGL commands we need to use the egl make current function uh, to actually activate the current context and for that we'll just pass it our display. For the surface that we want to draw on we'll pass our surface and for reading operations we're going to use the same surface and we'll pass our context in the end. And as usual we'll do an assert to make sure that our result is valid, it's uh, you know it didn't fail. And now we are going, we are ready to start drawing stuff so we'll understand details of OpenGL in the next video but uh, uh, for the basics OpenGL is kind of like a state machine with many different variables, uh, state variables. One of those is GL player color, which represents the clear uh, color that we uh, clear our screen with. And I'm going to just set it to yellow for now and full alpha, which uh, means opacity. And uh, inside of the renderer, I'm going to create a new function for doing a single frame. And we'll implement that function here. And in this function, we'll use uh, the you know uh, appropriate functions to draw to our screen. First of all, we'll want to get the width and height of the screen. For that, we'll We'll just uh, use the declare to variables and use the GL uh, EGL query surface to get uh, uh, surface properties. We are going to pass our display and surface, and for the attribute, we are going to you know, just say EGL width and pass the address of our width value. Similarly, we are going to do this for the height. This will get us the correct width and height, and then we'll use a function called GL viewport to specify to OpenGL what area of the screen we want to draw to. So for the x and y, we are going to say 0, 0, which means we'll start drawing from the top left corner of the screen and we'll just say the full width and height because we want to draw to the whole screen and this is going to get everything done correctly and then we'll use the GL clear function to actually clear our screen and we'll specify the GL color buffer bit to tell it that we want to clear our color there are other things you can clear as well but we'll understand those in the future for now this is going to just clear our screen with the color that we specified earlier which is yellow then we are going to use the EGL swap buffers function to actually you know get the results onto the screen and we're going to pass it our display and surface and uh, then of course we'll just assert to make sure that this function executed correctly and that's pretty much all we need to do to get this setup and now i'm going to go under main.cvp and there was a little problem in the event loop this is a poll all function so we can use an if statement we don't need to use a while loop and we actually need to check if it's greater than or equal to zero earlier we were just uh, checking it directly which means if it's equal to zero this would fail which is not what we want we only want this to uh, you know not execute if the result is negative so here we are going to check if our app data or app's user data is equal to null if it is then we are going to just go ahead and continue which means we won't execute this loop which means you know our window is not initialized yet otherwise we'll get our app's user data and convert that to a render pointer because that's what um, we initialize it with and then we'll call the do frame function on this renderer pointer so if you run the app now, you should be able to see a yellow screen here because that's what we said the clear color to and uh, this is going to conclude this video as you can see the OpenGL setup is working and in the next video we are actually going to learn how to use OpenGL ES to draw stuff to the screen and understand how shaders work, how the graphics pipeline works and we'll understand all of that in the next video so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that and share this video with other people as well and I'll see you in the next one and bye.